Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. We'd like to thank you for joining us. If you're a subscriber, thanks for coming back. Mm -hmm. And if you're new to our channel, we are here to share the joy of needlework. I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Deb. And we have received a tremendous amount of comments off our last video. We were away in Ocean City. Mm -hmm. And I would like to thank everybody who sent um, their condolences about the loss of my brother. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go over some of our comments um, that were of a stitching nature. Mm -hmm. Yes. We usually do that at this point. And yes. Deb has a few. Yes, yes. Um, Jean Andrews, uh, on our last video, we had a comment of um, someone who was discussing how she stored her uh, pieces when she was finished with them, and she puts them in empty zip or not ziplock, empty paper, um, paper and or, um, saran wrap and yeah, tin foil saran wrap boxes. Um, but Jean had a very good um, thought on that. She said she she would not recommend doing that um, because it, depending on how long you're going to leave it in there. Those things are not acid free, so and um, and that's a good thought. I didn't even think of that. So maybe if you're going to have it in there forever in a day, you might want to cover uh, your stitching with something that's acid free just to make sure it doesn't discolor. Um, but anyway, that was a that was a really good thought. Thank so you. So you can use the paper towel roll to protect it as long as you wrapped it in something else first. Is that what she's saying? I think as long as you have something on your stitching near your stitching. Whatever your what stitching touches, yes, okay, it should be acid free, just in case you're going to leave it in there forever. Yeah. Um, hopefully, then it won't deteriorate yeah. uh, and discolor. Yeah. So, thank you, Jean. I did not even think of that. That was that was great. Thank you. And you know what? This brings something to mind. If you're a viewer and you leave a comment or you don't leave a comment, I don't know if you've ever taken the time to read down through the comments people leave. Um, because there is a lot of information in yeah. those comments. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, it, yeah, there, it's, it's, it's a lot of yeah. um, Can be very helpful. real insightful. Mm -hmm. um, seaweed Otter, that's cute. She just wanted to know again real quick, I think you said it, but where did you find the Rendale Designs Clydesdale? I'm not that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's for that's me to know. Nice. <laughs> that is from an Etsy shop called Hixy Soft, H-I-X-X-Y. S O F T. Okay. And check our uh, description boxes too, because I usually try to leave links to that kind of thing to make it easier. Yeah, it did take a little while this time. We kind of forgot, but that's okay. <laughs> it happens. Um, Once Upon a Stitch. Hi, Lori. Uh, she was wondering um, on the Rosewood Manor pattern that I showed in our last video, it was called Buckleberry Sampler. Um, I didn't bring it this time, but she, she wanted to know. She wondered if there was a lot of over one on that. I'm stitching it over one because that's how I saw it stitched and it's beautiful. It does not have to be stitched over one though. You could you could stitch it on whatever you'd like. Um, and there weren't sections of petite stitch, were there? I don't recall that there were. I'm doing the whole thing. Right. But I mean, if she's asking if there was a lot of over one, there weren't even sections in the pattern that were outsets that were over one, were there? No. I don't I think don't so. Know. I think you can stitch the entire thing yeah. over two. Yeah. Um, so, But anyway, speaking of that, when I said that I was looking over someone's shoulder, um, <laughs> it was Diane. Hi, Diane. Uh, and that was so funny because she left a comment. She was like, it was me. Um, and it was beautiful. And she was stitching it over one. And she was pretty far along by the time yeah, we had seen was. it. And it was, it's just beautiful. So... Stitch it over one, over two, you know. Um, Connect the dots. Diane's also the lady that saved me a heartache on, on beading by telling me I could cut out a bead if it was the wrong color instead yeah. of taking all the stitches out. Yeah, and <laughs> speaking of people reading other people's comments, this was cool because Tara Ward, she left a comment for Diane on Diane's comment. <laughs> um, that's so fun. I love this. But she... She wanted to stitch it over one. She has a design and she was going to do it over two, but that would make it quite large. Mm -hmm. And when she saw that I was stitching it over one, she really liked that. Um, so she was wondering, I think she she just basically wanted to ask Diane, did you do it over one? And I am pretty darn sure because that's, uh, that's how we saw it. Mm -hmm. It was stitched over one. I'm pretty positive. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's really, really, really pretty. So, um, and... 
Dundee Stitchy, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. She was so cute. She wants to know if we coordinate our outfits. <laughs> and we didn't today either. This just happens. We never do that. It's the funniest thing when she shows up in my house and if we're wearing almost the same color or something that goes together, it cracks me up. Yep. I think that is so funny. Yep. But and now, I don't want to jinx it or mess it I was up just by say, calling and saying, what are you wearing? Yeah. <laughs> and now every time you show up, we'll be like, oh, <laughs> no, we'll have to fix that. But no, we don't. <laughs> Um, let me see that. Oh, okay. So Marsha Dixon, she had a good question. She said she's interested in doing a dimensions on 40 count. Um, and she wanted to know if there was a rule of thumb that you stitch two over two for this count. Um, no, there's no rule of thumb. You don't, you don't have to stitch two over two on 40 count. A lot of people like to use one thread. They like to use one over two on 40 count. But honestly, again, it comes down to personal preference. I've done both. Stitch two threads over two, um, one thread over two, it, one over one. It really depends on the amount of space you have in the threads. Like, yeah, your linen will determine a yeah, lot of that. If you're doing 40 count, to stitch with two threads over two is bulky. Can be, but it, not always. I've done it many times and it looks good. If you're using satin, I mean, excuse me, silk. silk. That's another ball game because that's so fine. Um, but the, generally speaking, I think I know what you're talking about by rule is a lot of people, and if you read patterns, it'll say um, that stitching on 14 slash 28 or 16 slash 32 use two threads over two. And then if you go up to 36 and 40 count, it'll say use one thread over two. So. I know what you're referring to because I've seen it in a pattern, but like Deb said, what you like is what people stitch. Yeah, I mean, even on my piece that I'm doing now, um, my dimensions, the farm scene, it has it has two threads on some of it, and it's fine. It's perfectly fine. It A lot of it depends on your linen, you know, how much give you have in it, how stiff it is, that kind of thing. And people change that, too, in the same piece for a different effect. So... Um, I've seen it done where on the outside of a piece, if they want it to look like it's uh, muted or far away, they'll use one thread as opposed to the center and the focus of their piece being two threads. So it's fun. It gives you choices. Yeah, choices are good. Um, I wanted to say congrats to um, Priscilla and Kathy Hoverman because they have a new collaboration out. Yep. So that's awesome. Uh, you can actually, I just saw it come through, the, the finished final pieces today and uh, it's on Instagram right yeah I saw it on Instagram it's really pretty yeah. so congratulations that's awesome so anybody who was you know really sad and upset that the other series was finished and you thought that was it no more now you can get excited again so that's good that's cool um, so I think if do you want to I yeah. think I'm finished for right now okay um, I wanted to say a quick thank you to Teresa Alber um, she a couple of videos back saw my little uh, yarn dolls that I started for my granddaughters and she sent me a box with some colors she picked out that went along with the list I needed and just thank you for all the time you put into that very much I appreciate it yeah I can't that's wait awesome. to start they're wrapped so perfectly they're yeah. labeled they're oh, that's my kind of girl man is she organized that's awesome how sweet yes very very you. cool yeah and then um and we had already thanked Donna she's the one that uh sent the other yarn that I used and um, we had a couple of emails. Uh, one of them was from a woman who had stitched a piece. She had done a Mirabilia, um, a Nor, Nor Corbett, a uh, mermaid actually. And she washed it to clean it after she was through and it ran. And she wanted to know what I might suggest for washing her pieces. After I you're done to, crying. Yeah, I Ugh. hate to say this, but... Mm. I don't That's wash sad. anything when I'm through stitching. I don't if, either. If I want to wash something, if my fabric has got some blemishes on it, I wash it before I start. Um, but there are so many threads that don't say. What about over -dyed say, fabric? Oh, thank you. The over dyed fabric is also something that you don't want to put in the water. I actually sprayed with my iron to iron a piece of over dyed one time, and it was tea and coffee stained and it actually splotched where I sprayed with just water 
Wow. So I've even come away from putting everything in water if it's not um, straight linen. If it's over dyed, test it. Take a little corner, put some water on it, see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, because it is, it's all tricky. The dyes that they use can wash and bleed so easily. So I don't. I don't even do DMC threads. No, I don't. In I water. just don't. That's all. And I know people do it. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, to each his own. I just don't. I remember but. back in the day when I was in high school, we used to get these hoodies from Mexico. They were made out of a really coarse uh, fiber that was braided. You've probably yes, seen, I've them. seen them. Yeah. They have a pouch yeah. on the front. Well, they were not color fast. So you couldn't wash those with your other clothes unless you put it into a salt wash first. You actually put salt in the water, in ice cold water, and soaked it. And then it would set the dye that was there, but a lot of the dye would still come out in that first yeah. soaking. And then from that point on, Mom didn't yell at me if I put it in the washer <laughs> because I had gotten rid of most of it. Um, but it's just, it's not something we do. Yeah. We, don't, we don't wash. Yeah. So spot wash. I mean, if you're done and, and you've accidentally gotten something on a part of it that's going to show when you frame it or finish it, mm -hmm. um, just do it ever so gently and I would blot it more than wet it and see if you can't just pull out the blemish without yeah. getting it wet. That's really sad though because what a lot of work. Oh yes. my. Yes and mm. I'm glad you're starting it again. Wow. That's um, yeah. my, <laughs> you have my admiration yeah. to do it and then try it again. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, good for you. Wow. Um, then we had an email uh, from a woman that is doing, she's a long dog sampler nut and she sent us a picture. I'm going to try to show you this. It's very pretty. She used a fabric and uh, fiber that she had shown us once. Um, there is a glare down there. Yeah, um, it's on the original picture. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I can't get rid of it. But it's very pretty. She Looks also, like there's a ghost in that picture. <laughs> she made a mention a stitching ghost in her email uh, that she had finished, her husband had brought back her finish um, on Death by Cross Stitch. And then life after death. I think that was the one. <laughs> life, life after death, which was the follow-up. And I thought, ah, and we haven't seen a picture of that yet. So um, we still would like to see a picture of that one. <laughs> the the work that you people put into this is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And we love seeing it. Um, let's see. Someone had mentioned that they were getting ready. Penny did that. She's getting ready to stitch on linen for the first time. She's mm -hmm. been doing all of her stitching on 18 count. Mm -hmm. She wondered if we had a suggestion for linen. I have a thought for you, Penny, and it might be an intermediate step, but I would almost suggest going from your 18 count to an even weave. Yes. And start with an even weave. Um, it's not necessarily not linen. It's just that it's woven with... Um, even fibers and you're not going to have slubs and things get in your way when you're doing your first piece. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Would you think? I, th I, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And it's either that or just jump in with both feet. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing too, if, if you're starting with a piece that's your ideal piece and pattern and the color may just drive what you're looking for, mm -hmm. um, whether they have it in a count you like, I would suggest if you've been working on 18 count that you might look at, um, like a 32 count linen or a, the even weaves come in 30, 28, 32, right? Oh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure. I know that where we were just shopping, they were missing a couple of the sizes, but um, yeah. So you could go with a 32 count even weave too, and that'll get you closer to your 18 gauge that you're used to. Mm -hmm. So I hope it goes well when you start your, your piece. Let mm -hmm. us know how it looks. Um, and then um, a long time ago, it's got to be at least three or four videos, Yeah, we had someone ask us how they start on linen. So Penny, we'll give you a tip here. I was going to say, this might help you also, Penny. Yep. Um, I put together this little um, tool for teaching um, so that I can show you what we have here when you look at linen. The key is to start at what's called a vertical thread. If you're stitching over two threads, 
you're going to do it a little bit differently. But I used two colors here so you can follow this. Your fabric won't be this way, but you'll see that the horizontal ribbon, the dark ribbon, and the green ribbon is your vertical ribbon. You're going to look for where your vertical thread crosses over your horizontal thread. And at this point, this would be that intersection right here. This would also be an intersection right here. And again, down here, you have another intersection. Is that one? Mm -hmm. Am I on the yep. right one? Yep, okay. Good. It's hard to see from I here. I know, yeah. So, what I'm going to suggest you do is come up at the juncture. Do you want me to hold it back a little bit? Right there is good. Come up at the junction next to the intersection of your vertical thread. So here's my vertical thread and here's my horizontal thread, the blue one. So I'm coming up just to the left and down from that vertical thread. And then you go over two and go back down and that would be your first stitch, your first half leg. So you come up just to the left of where the vertical thread crosses the horizontal thread. That's your start. Then you continue to go across two at a time, and every time you do it, you're going to be at a vertical thread when you start your stitch. On the first leg, right? Yes. On the first leg. Yes, your, your beginning stitch, your, the first leg of your stitch, is always going to come up just to the left of the horizontal. So you're always going to use that as a, a line. And what you'll see, too, if I remember correctly what I, what I read, is that as you study your fabric, you'll see a naturally larger space at this intersection and you'll start to see the pattern and it'll look normal to you to come up in those locations. Um, I have stitched on someone else's piece that didn't come up on a vertical thread and it was so funny because I kept having this tendency to want to go over one more thread to start and I kept having to reel myself back. So if you're stitching over one, this doesn't apply um, because eventually stitching over one, you're always gonna come up at the next thread that is not vertical. Um, but if you start at the vertical, it does give you a bit more of an anchor for that first stitch, and then you can continue from there. So hopefully that helps, and when you're starting on your linen, the same counting applies. Um, you're going to find your center, you're going to count over to your first stitch, and then just look for the very first vertical thread that you come to. Okay, thanks Deb. Sorry about the shaking camera. Yeah, um, we have company yeah. today. Ivan was down there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's laying sort of next to our camera mount. Um, so, what are you working Ooh. on? Ivan, come around. Come around. He wants to say hi. Um, Back. Let's see. Here. Come around. This way. There you go. I oh. did some work on... Thank you. We went away for the weekend, obviously, you know that if you watched last week's video. So that was just, it was fun. It's a weekend um, to get away for Super Bowl and they have a, a sale. I think a lot of um, uh, shops are having Super Bowl sales, which is cool. Uh, so Salty Yarns has a sale and we go there and um, stitch and have fun and eat and shop and all that good stuff. Uh, so I took along my dimensions farm scene and I had I got a little bit more done on that one Let me show the pattern but and I am doing it on uh, linen 40 count linen and I am using some of the call for colors but then I also am choosing my own um, over dyed threads so then for Christmas Liz got me the Jenny Bean and Friends Samantha we had seen this up at Stitches Unlimited uh -huh. on the wall, and it's it's absolutely beautiful. Oh my gosh, it is so pretty. Um, uh oh, pardon, pardon our uh, camera <laughs> um, operator. <laughs> so I wanted to get this started, and while we were down at Salty Yarns, I picked out the threads. Um, I am doing it on, or I I did 
pick all the called for colors because they're just beautiful. Um, this is the color palette. Really, really pretty colors. And I chose some fabric. Um, the colors are either gen. Oh, are they all gen art? No, there's some. No. Um, oh, Classic. You are, mean, they... are they all simply shaker and gentle art? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me look. Okay. And um, I think so. Yep. Then the fabric that I chose is maritime white. And there's my start on that. And I am doing this with one thread, one strand of um, floss. And I fell in love okay. with it, so she couldn't be the only one doing it. So <laughs> I have that. Yep. And I also have um, two choices for linen. Deb picked out the Maritime White while we were there, but I forgot when we were at Stitches Unlimited, I had picked up a piece of a new color I hadn't seen before called Brulee. Um, so I'm going to have to look and see with my threads which one I want to do for my house. Yeah, yeah. And we chosen. also, since we were stitching and hanging out, we also got to watch a little bit of Floss Tube and catch up with some people, which is always fun. Yes. A lot of fun. Um, I wanted to mention um, on Pam and Steph's videos, uh, if you haven't watched lately, please do, because... They're, they have, um, they're kind of together with they have twin, adventure going with, yeah, twin. with Twin Peak Primitives. And if yeah. you haven't seen their designs, you might want to check them out. Beautiful designs. Um, but every week, Pam and Steph choose a design. And then if you um, mention, you know, seeing it there, whatever, they give a percentage off. Uh, beautiful designs. I think you can also get hard copies um, if you don't want them, what, via email or whatever PDF. you call that, PDF. Mm -hmm. um, but really, really cool. Plus, there is also a way for you to win a chance to go to the Netherlands. So, so if you haven't check checked out. that out, yeah, they have all the information in their drop-down section under the video if you want to check it out. It's pretty cool. So, you know, congrats. They get to go to the Netherlands. That's awesome. Uh, and that was fun. That's fun to see their designs. And Twin Peak Primitives, you can also look them up on Instagram. Um, I think Pam and Steph also have their website, all the information, but the, the designs are, it's hard to yeah. choose. Take a look. Which one? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to mention, who were the young people that we were watching while we were away? Oh, Stitching Sisters and Brother. They are so fun. Yeah. So that's a, that's a channel. <laughs> yes. If you're watching Floss Tube, yeah, be sure cute. to put that in your search yeah. window and go take a look at some of the younger stitchers coming up behind yes. us. Yes, yes. And we caught up, uh, oh, we caught up with, we, we got to watch so many, which is great. Um, but also Kitten Stitcher, she did a really cool thing um, with her thumbs up and thumbs down, which I thought was fun. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, Beth Twist, she has some really pretty new designs. They're all um, scripture. And all of the proceeds go to Charity. charities that she um that are special to her and that's really cool mm -hmm. there's just so much right now i mean with yep. uh, and that's been those things so have been cropping up for the last couple of weeks because we saw mm -hmm. beth's has been out a couple of weeks mm -hmm. now yeah so yeah yeah a lot of fun. be sure check check yeah. out the other floss tube channels that we that we all like to watch yes um let's see i do you want to show your goodies that you got well um first i'll just show what i did work on oh yeah i do have one thing i have been working on something for today's program um, and you'll see that when we get to the program but if you recall i had shown you i had was going to work on this scarecrow for someone um in the guild and this was the little guy from fern ridge collections and I got him done just sitting there in the room. Got him all done. His body, but me. I forgot to bring his head along, so he isn't <laughs> hooked onto the hook. I sat there going, Dab, I forgot his head. I had his hat, and I had the fringe, but I didn't have his head. So I set that aside. Um, and I started working on some of my other fobs, too, but I didn't get enough done on any one of them to really make it worth the time to show. It. So <laughs> we'll get back to them. Um, oh, yeah, you asked me if I wanted to show yeah. some of the goodies. I did pick up um, two more kits. Um, this has been one of Deb's favorites yes, for a long so time. Yes, she's so pretty. It's the mermaid. Aww. So Deb will probably see that eventually. I'm not going to say when. Aww. And this one strikes a chord with me because my husband likes um, model railroad cars, and he's in a railroading club. In mm -hmm. fact, they met last night. Mm -hmm. um, this one, this steampunk look to That's it. That's adorable. I like it. 
I'm not sure if I make more than one of these. I'm not sure how I'm going to accomplish that same look. I'll have to go out to his toolbox and dig through his parts and pieces and see yeah. what I can attach. I also think at the scrapbooking section. You yeah, know how they yeah have definitely. That stuff, yep. I might be able to find some. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> could you do that and put on there Conrail? Oh, yeah, you could. Well, or not. it would depend on how much, you know, for your your for dad's dad. past. Mm -hmm. um, I could put something on there that might look like the logo if we have enough space and it. it's not real wide. Oh, okay. okay. So it would depend on how okay. the lettering True. might work out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but okay. we can try. Then, That's cool. for those of you who enjoy the Just Nan mice, I was so excited. There's two patterns here that I picked up. The first one I'm going to show you is the actual mouse. And just take a quick look at the back of that mouse. I love the cardinals. Aww. Couldn't pass him up. And Pat, uh, in my round robin group, who's now just part of my little friends group <laughs> on stitching, um, Pat sent me a picture and said, look what's coming out. And she commented that it was coming out soon. And I thought, oh, I can't wait. I'm going to keep watching. Well, they had just received it at Salty Yarns when we got there. So <laughs> I had the opportunity to get it. And then this is just the pattern for the box that for this sits that on. cube. Yeah. Okay. Just a little box. That's so cool. And I was impressed um, with the color choices here. The cardinals and the tree and the snowflake on the box really pop. They used a raw linen for that very cool um and it doesn't match the mouse exactly and he pops even yeah, more on top pretty. of that i like that and then i picked up one this is adorable <laughs> i was looking in prairie schooler for something it's hank i don't recall what i was digging through there for um but i found this instead of what i was like, actually digging through there for and i want to try to do this for my granddaughters <laughs> it's um old mcdonald and i had not seen this before that's so cool. And Deb came up and said, now you have to do this in red and white. And she was telling me how to do the cow. Oh, I pointed at the dog, that's but okay. I meant the cow. That's okay. <laughs> um, so that was what I picked out for patterns. I did pick out um, quite a few threads like you did. Well, that's the thing. I got a lot of threads, and I got two of those really large rings. Liz has shown them before, and that's how she stores her um, over-dyed threads. Mm -hmm. So I did get those from Salty Yarns. I had lots of threads that I needed, and I got three pieces of linen um, and I got the linen for the Jenny Bean and the threads for the Jenny Bean um, I didn't get I didn't get one pattern yeah and I did get some linen oh, and scissors I got some new scissors yeah and needles mm -hmm. I got needles I did so. I got some needles yeah. I also picked up a few uh, Mill Hill specialty bead packets mm. because I use those on the fringe section sometimes you can get more of them at a place like Fire Mountain Gems but sometimes it's hard to tell exactly what they look like. And I am terrible with the dimensions. I thought I ordered... Oh, you mean ordering like online? Oh, yeah. Okay. I ordered the caps for the beads that you'll see. Sometimes there'll be a, a metal finding on top of a round bead and it sort of just sits on mm -hmm. the bead. I thought I ordered the size for the round bead. No. <laughs> I got a cap that's about as big as the end of this <laughs> pen to go on a round bead the size of a dime. This <laughs> is totally... Not the same. <laughs> Ooh, so could it go in a strawberry? Um, or no? Oh, subscriber tribute time. If you're new to our channel, uh, when the alarm goes off, we have a giveaway <laughs> to a subscriber that watches us. Mm -hmm. And today, well, we hit over four thousand. So thank you so much. Yes. So we we have um, very cool chart. It's a Barbara Anna design, and it is. Christmas Robin's Scissor Fob. Very, very pretty. Uh-oh, sorry there's a glare there, but you can still get the get the gist. Very, very cute. And to go with that, Liz made a scissor fob for you. And it has a heart at the bottom because it's almost Valentine's Day. So our subscriber winner is Susie Bree. B-R-E-E. -E. So thank you so much for to all the subscribers. Everyone who watches comments, just thank you so much. Yes. And Susie, if you can get a hold of us, our info um, is in the drop-down section. And have uh, feel free to get a hold of us uh, more than one way if you'd like. <laughs> that does help sometimes. Yes. So, okay. Oh, you yes. know what? what? We're talking about subscribers. I wanted to say I received an email, and um, 
the name escapes me. Pardon me for that because I got a lot going on right now. But um, it was a viewer who's part of a quilting group. And I just read it this morning. She has been watching us and she went to her quilting group and told the people there about our channel. Aww. And now they watch our channel while they stitch Aww. and do their quilting. So quick shout oh, out yeah. to the quilting group. Cool. Thank you. That that reminds me of one other thing I want to show you. Hopefully, um, well, the next time we're at my house, I found the coolest thing. I, I have the back of my craft room now getting set up where my sewing machine is and everything, and I do want to get into some quilting. Um, Nana had made me a wall hanging, and you didn't even see it yet, mm -mm. but I found it, and okay. it's so cute. So I want to I want to show that. Um, I have it setting out, but that's really cute. She she did beautiful beautiful quilts. Um, so, and then, hi, Nana, because she's probably... <laughs> Hello, <to> Nana. <laughs> um, and I think probably uh -oh. timber. Yeah. We have so much sitting here for the rest of this program, it's uh, nuts. Yeah. Um, There's stuff everywhere. If you're watching, and we don't ask this often, we don't even mention it very often, but feel free to subscribe. It helps us. <laughs> we know you like us, and it makes us feel good uh, when our subscriber numbers go up. So, don't forget. Um, at this point... We're going to look at um, our program. Mm -hmm. And today, just like on Sesame Street, today mm -hmm. is brought to you by <laughs> <laughs> Just Another Button Company. Mm -hmm. And we've been waiting to do this because we had done something in something. 2014. 15. 15, sorry. Four mm -hmm. years ago. Four jamborees prior yes. to this. Um, and do we need to explain jamboree? Well, just in case, it's a retreat we go to at Salty Yarns mm -hmm. in the fall. Mm -hmm. And if you have watched any of our previous fall videos, we probably said mm -hmm. it at least a dozen times. There's three designers that come, and you take three different classes, and it is a lot of fun. So, what we're going to show you was part of our jamboree for that year, 2015. Ready? Ready, Freddie. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We had one class. Um, that was actually making this pear pin cushion. And Rachel taught this class. The class before this was taught by Cecile. And Cecile taught us how to make buttons. That was so cool. And so we're going to show you a few of those. But, that was so cool. Um, Just Another Button Company has started, Deb shared with me, an Instagram presence. And they say that every project deserves a perfect button. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they gave us a way to track the number of classes we take through Just Another Button Company, a little um, ribbon mm -hmm. to wear. Mm -hmm. And this is made from their Sculpey clay. And then this button indicates we went to one class already. Mm -hmm. And then they would give us buttons if we were attending other classes they had. Yeah. That was part of our... our uh, goodies to take away. And the way that they, um, d uh, what do I want to call, displayed, remember how we walked in and, and all of our materials were in that beautiful ball yes. jar? Yes. And, uh, oh gosh. They put everything it was that just made awesome. our pair in a jar. It was just awesome. And it was a lot of fun. Like the detail was just wonderful. And then when we came back for the button class, we walked in and there were big globs of sculpey clay mm -hmm. sitting at each of our places. Yeah. I never knew what went into making a button before. And, and it was so fascinating. Um, yeah. I'll show you a couple that I made while we I, were at the class. I did not bring my buttons that I made except I made that tag for my basket. Um, I do have some buttons at home, but I did forgot to bring those. These are a couple. I think the pumpkin I might have made with my granddaughters. Aww. Try to Can hold it. Just, oops. I think maybe holding it just in front of the paper like oh, that. Oh, the paper. Good or bad. Does okay. that help you? Yeah, thanks. Okay. That was a little pumpkin that my granddaughters and I made after the class. We got, we all got involved afterwards. This was a pear with a little leaf on it that I made while we were at the class. I made a couple of those. Um, and then I made a little tiny, they called them cane buttons where I made a little candy cane, and that wasn't why it's called a cane, it's cut a cane because you build the design inside of a long roll of clay, and then you slice the buttons off. But this one, I don't know that you'll be able to see, but it actually has a candy cane inside the button. 
Um, but this one I made, and I was so excited by this one. My daughter loves zebras. <laughs> And this one I made while we were there. It was so much fun. I haven't come up with a pattern yet to put this on, but I'm looking. So every pattern deserves a button, too. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. got to find the right pattern. Um, and then when the girls and I were playing, I made a couple of uh, three-dimensional things with the Sculpey. Yeah, she made me a pineapple, and it's so cute. And, of course, I this forgot that. This is my little so. crab, <laughs> if that shows up there. Yeah, this is my little crab. And then there's a little pineapple on one of the little fobs that I stitched for us for a retreat. So anyway, just one of the classes very was fun. on the buttons. And then yeah, to give you fun. an idea of what it looks like if you actually are going to get their buttons, they have a never-ending supply mm -hmm. of shapes, styles. These are just some that I have that go with certain... Um, That's cute. Yeah, uh, the the design for some of these were free designs if you bought the the button collection. So I have a little stack of patterns to go back and stitch some of these things with. Um, some of them you'll recognize they're they're always available. And then there's some of these more detailed ones with the holly and the berries. And then um, they have pins that go just like what are in our pairs. So. Anyway, yeah. it's a veritable borgishmord <laughs> of choices. And and the t the size can get minute. This little yeah, guy it's amazing. goes on something we're doing. Got I forget it? which. He's an inchworm. He's so tiny. So, I know. And now that we took that class and I look at the buttons, it's so <laughs> cool because now you know how they were made. Yep. And the time and the oh my goodness that it went into it went into them. Amazing. It is. And yeah. Um, there's no end to what you can do now. I stitched a model for a new program they came out with, um, which are partially stitched and partially stamped, uh, alphabet designs. And then there are buttons that go with them and they're done on, um, sort of a canvas and you can purchase those. Um, mine wasn't a letter of the alphabet series. Mine turned out to be a cupcake. Remember the oh, cupcake yeah. I stitched? Um, that was fun. So they've done those. Now they collaborate as they started with um, Kathy Haberman at our retreat. Hoberman. Kathy Haberman, sorry, <laughs> did um, tomato tomato yeah. <laughs> did a um, um, a needle book series with pears and apples. Oh, I can show you my pair that coordinated. This is the pear yep. needle book, and then there's one of the buttons down there. Yeah, this was pre-stitch that we had, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and we also had an apple one. Um, and that was also pre-stitch. And then in the class, we were able to... I, my scissors almost fell out. Oh, There's the back. <laughs> we were able to put it completely together. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And then there's where you put your needles in here, and then your scissors slide out. Referring to overdyed, my first experience with overdyed floss and getting it wet was purely accidental. We were sitting in the room, and I was finishing my pre-stitch before the retreat. This is Kathy Hopperman. And I set my stitching down on the table next to me, and I came back, and I had a ring from my glass. Ooh. It had been damp. And I looked down, and all of my terracotta floss had run. And mm. I ended up not finishing that. Um, and then I got some more terracotta to do it later. But that was a disaster. And it ruined my little project card and Aww. everything. It was so sad. So sad. Yeah. Um, that is sad. Then... These are so cute. We were looking around, and this publication came out from just another button company. Do you have yours? Or? That is mine. <laughs> no, this is mine. Um, oh, you got stuff in yours, too? Uh -huh. There it is. We both have the same paper <laughs> stuffed in our books, and no, I thought I have that my, one um, was mine sitting there. No, I have my... See my paper? Pap oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I, I looked down, and I saw this that. This was the perfect pair um, directions uh, when we took our class. Just to prove we did it, actually. Mm -hmm. So, this book. You're showing the front. Pincushion Projects. I'll show the back. Pincushion Appeal is the title of it. This is a really cool book. And I just want to show you. I have a couple of favorites. This one. The Whale. I just mm -hmm. think it's so adorable. And also, and this is I'm in love. this is one of my favorites. The Bird. Because I love that nest made out of ribbons. And then it's on a spool. I think that's adorable. It is. 
so cute. And the Santa. Yeah, they're and all. I've had trouble trying to locate great. this houndstooth you can color. You use anything though. If well, it's it. just that I like that you want light that aqua. I really do. Yeah. I have, which you'll see, um, lots of other color choices. I just, I like that one. Yeah. Step by step instructions. Great book. Yes. If you're into um, working with some felt, it's a so lot of fun. And Rachel. Yes. Yes, and they did a great class. That was a really fun jamboree, and I loved how everything tied together. Mm -hmm. That was really, really fun. And now I'll show you what I've been doing with my time. Oh, I forgot to, we forgot to show these. We have, um, and you have your thread. Are you going to okay. ask about thread? Remember how you were wondering which one to use? Can we come back to that one? Oh, we yeah, yeah, just yeah, another yeah. Mountain company? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're not finished She's yet. She's <laughs> cutting me off before my big star <laughs> moment here. It's like, what? We're done? No. <laughs> This was my first pin cushion before the pair. I did, they call him um, Christmas Elf. Elf is in the title. He looks like a Santa to I me, but Santa. they called him an elf. <laughs> Rick did last night too. I was showing him and he goes, oh, you did a Santa. I said, yes, an elf. That's a Santa. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so cute. He's adorable. Who, Rick or the Santa? Both. Okay. Just checking. And then what's been holding us from doing this a little while ago was our desire to get the other pin cushions done. I just finished the little love bird and he has some stitching on him that was fun just to, to um, accentuate him a little bit and give a little dimension to him. Oh, show the tail. That's adorable. So cool. And he's put together real simply. The wings are attached at the top. His little mug in the front. <laughs> <laughs> and then the pins are so cute. They yeah. just go perfectly with yeah. the little love bird. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, the final one that concludes my collection of four so far. Wait, what was your bird's name? Um, oh, I named my bird Oliver, didn't I? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Percy. 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 Yes. 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 And then they actually have names, but this little guy, I told Deb, I said you have to name my owl, and she named him. So I chose him Oscar. Oscar. His actual name is Edgar J. <laughs> um, so now, now is he, he missing a leg? No, this is just a a leaf he's sitting on. Oh, okay. And it has a button on it. Gotcha. Now I did this, and the instructions called for um, thread that matches the wool. And without thinking, I worked right through it, and then I was starting to put him together, and I realized that the picture and my owl look differently. And I realized that when they did the stitching on the detail for the leaf and then the wings, they used a contrasting thread, which makes sense because mm -hmm. you want it to show. Just like how this bird, that's what Liz is talking about. See how they're, they're, the wing has a contrasting thread and it looks really pretty? Yeah, so without thinking about it, I used the matching threads and I don't care for the look that I got. So rather than put him all together at once, I put him together with some pins to show you how he goes together mm -hmm. and at the same time allow me to go back and, and redo my thread work. So um, the last thing you do, of course, is put your little uh, pins in the top, but he's connected. His colors are so pretty. Very easily with, actually I'll go from the back, his tail pins and attaches at the top, his wings attach at this corner where that pin is and around the top here so they're free, and then the eyes are stitched on, the beak is attached at the bottom and top and he, the beak is actually stuffed with some roving just like his body. And then all these feathers are attached with nothing more than a little cross stitch at the top. And you can put them on in any order or fashion you want. I think there's 18 total, but they tell you if you want to add more, feel free to cut out more and add more. And then there's hmm. uh, various buttons that are scattered around that you're allowed to put anywhere you want. You're allowed. Yeah. <laughs> you're allowed to put them anywhere you want to. <laughs> Can't change anything else, but you can put those on. Anyway, so... Um, that's a little deconstruct on the construct there, um, mm -hmm. give you an idea. So I would suggest if you've ever seen one and thought about it and they look like they might be complicated, um, they're detailed, but I wouldn't say complicated. You can follow the directions. 
um, and get a very good result mm -hmm. by following their directions. Mm -hmm. So find one. I would so start cute. maybe with, I wouldn't suggest starting with Oscar. Oscar? Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest starting maybe with something a little more um, simple. The Lovebird was pretty simple to do. Or our pears. Or our pear. Yeah. Yes, and that's available in the stores. I know it was our class they taught it with, but the pear yeah. has very little adornment on the outside. It's mm -hmm. mostly about how you piece it and sew it together mm -hmm. and then stuff it. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and just a tip. Stuff, 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 stuff. And, and then, then when you think you stuffed enough, yes. you stuff more. Then stuff more. Yeah. With my elf, I stuffed him, and when I was done... I put him all together and I had a good third of the roving left in the bag. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, they gave you extra roving. Mm -mm. No, not really. I just didn't keep stuffing. Yeah. And to to go back to something Vana taught uh, Twisted Stitcher when she does her pillows, take the time before you stuff to pull that roving yeah. apart as as thin and as separated as you can get it mm -hmm. because that gives you more bulk mm -hmm. when you stuff yeah. it into your I was pillow. amazed at what went in there. Yes. Amazed. Yes. And last night, that was a long part of it, was just separating all that roving and getting yeah. it all fluffed up. Yeah. And you take that roving that's folded up in the bag and you come out with a pile about this big and then it all condenses back down yeah. into your pin cushion and it makes it nice and firm. Yeah. I, I was amazed at what went in there. And that's when you're... Did we ever share the purple thing? We yes. did, right? Yes. That's when and that that's, comes in handy when you're stuffing these. I have my tools over there. Um... This yeah, little that guy. Or, or this is not expensive. It's sold in your needlework stores. Yeah, and I think sometimes Vana even just uses a um, chopstick. Chopstick. Yep, that's that what works I great used too. To. But th those definitely come in handy when you're doing something like that. One yeah. last comment on Oscar. Oscar. Um, this is the first one I've done that they actually suggest you put walnut shells mm. or beans, dried beans of some kind or dried peas in the bottom to give him a little weight. Um, and so he has a third of him is stuffed with the walnut shells and then the rest of him was stuffed with uh, cool roving. He's cute. Whoops, you go down so here cute. with your friends. Now, they're really fun. I have a quick question for you. Yes. Did you know that there's a difference in felt? I did. You did. I knew. <laughs> that brings us to a little quick segment of did you know um, that ties right into this. The felt that is used, I'll pick one up that's a little easier to show it on. Um, this felt by Weeks Dye Works is actually woven. This has a warp and a weft to it. This makes a very different product when you're doing hand stitching on this and you're actually sewing on the outside and your finished piece has a very different feel than if you were to buy what I would call craft felt. Um, mm -hmm. This was a piece that comes from like AC Moore and Michaels and I have a stash of this because I use it to back some of my perforated paper, ornaments, things like that that I just want to finish. Mm -hmm. But again, even then, depending on what look you're looking for, I have some red. if you use this woven felt no, not this. this Even is the this. thickness yeah. is... Um, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you pulled that out of your stack. Do you have this woven is, there? Yep, this is all Can woven. you hold a piece of woven up for Oh, me? yeah. Well, you want all of them? No, just one. No. I just want you to, okay. to just show. Even the, the consistency and thickness of it, you can tell you have a different product there. Yeah. Now I could use that for my Santa. Mm, anyway, um, I thought Star when I was on Etsy, I saw a, a website... A different colors. Um for felt and they were talking about the thickness so you'll see something when you look at this that might remind you of the robin that I showed you and the Santa notice these colors look remotely similar to that pincushion book because um, I thought I was ordering woven felt oh. and when I got it while I like the quality of this felt it's a nice craft felt um, yeah. It's a little thicker than the stuff I got at um, AC Moore, mm -hmm. but it still isn't woven. Mm -hmm. So um, while it may read and sound and look online like a woven felt, unless it actually says woven, mm -hmm. 
don't buy it if yeah. you're using it for something like this. So yeah, mine I actually was able to get at a uh, quilting store that unfortunately was going out of business up uh, in the Finger Lakes mm -hmm. in New York, and uh, I got as much as I could when I was there because everything was on sale. I wish that store would not have gone out of business. It was so pretty. Yeah. But that's where I got most of mine. So. And places do go out of business. Um, that's a segue back to a comment we got, too, about a lap stand that they were looking at that you had, the one that goes between your legs. Mm -hmm. American Dream Products mm -hmm. um, discontinued that lap sorry. stand. They're not going out of business, but they discontinued that lap stand mm -hmm. um, in favor of a table slash lap stand that they use. But yeah, um, keep your eyes on things. If you see something you really like, um, sometimes it's good to to get it when you see it. Yeah, and you never know. Mm -hmm. Someone might have it out there, and they just don't really care for it, and they might sell it or. Yep. Um, Deb like is that. looking. She's going to show you a piece she's been working on. We were working on what was called I Stitches Blue Sampler. Blue yeah. Blue. blue. <laughs> <laughs> Spit it Sally out. sells <laughs> um, blue band sampler. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it is a PDF that you buy, and um, she released it. We got it after it was released, so we were able to get the whole thing. Um, I think it was pretty much finished by the time. What she means by that is the I Stitch band samplers traditionally have been released as like a mystery sampler one band at a time yeah like every week every friday you, you would subscribe get... to it yeah so anyway i have the first part almost completely finished um i just have to fill in this grid and then there's an alphabet that goes in there and um, this is the first this... part of a two-part yes sampler. so this is the first part and this banding we got from sassy jacks stitchery um and, and you've seen it before because yeah you've seen this one before but i just wanted to show it because i'm almost finished yep. with the first part i then, meant the banding because we did show the banding when you bought it oh, okay that was and then we'll i'll start the second part to that um because it's quite long when it's finished mm -hmm. this thread is um i didn't get it out it's over there i can go <laughs> whoops I can go look at the color oh i know we've we'll said put it, it before in but um in the description box it's, it's uh, a silken colors right yeah is it water um lilies or no is that what you got water lilies oh i have to go over there and check it's just one strand and it's a thicker thread but oh um, wildflower wildflower yes wildflower. that's right you're um, not using silk but it's no but it's variegated it's just one strand and you get all these beautiful Burnt colors toast that might be it yes I, it is because i have it that might be it but you get all these colors out of that one thread one strand it's just simple this was my um this was my stitch whenever we would go and watch uh baseball Logan much but you know because it was just I can I can carry it easy carry it easy it's one thread I can see it without magnifiers or mm -hmm. anything like that it was just it was easy to yeah. um to stitch while we watched baseball and so. I actually just started mine while we were away yeah yeah for the first time my fingers bleeding okay how I know I don't know how I hurt myself Boo -boo. all right um that's about it for today, except for Gadget Corner. We can't leave that out. <laughs> and Deb asked me what Gadget Corner was yeah. this time, and I said, not telling. She's not sharing. I said, can you wait? And she <laughs> said, yes. I like surprises. While we were away, I like to, to look, considering our, our uh, videos, and we were at Salty Yarns, and I remember the first time I saw this. It was in an old... Uh, box of stitching things that my grandmother had and I had never seen one before um well let's see is our paper Sorry. flying around um that's what I was looking for earlier oh it's well here somewhere. I probably stole it here we go I got it got it there it is I'll hold that if you want to hold that all right this is what we're talking about it's a long thin piece of metal and it has a rectangular hole at the end and then another square hole at the very top, if you can see that. It has a special name. It's a fun name. It's called a bodkin, B-O-D-K-I-N. Hmm. And when I first saw this in there, I thought, I what is that for? And I thought in, immediately when I saw it, I thought, ooh, when you're trying to put elastic in a casing or something like that, wouldn't that be great? You slip it through that square hole, and then you can run it through and put your elastic in. Well, it works great for that. But it's actually also for things like um, ribbon stitching. If you ever do anything with a fine ribbon or a heavier uh, or a wider weave, um, you'll get asked to use one of these tools. So today, 
for those of you who may not seen a bodkin, mm -hmm. now you know. And this bodkin is going to go to our subscriber tribute. Oh, good. And the bodkin you have is going to go to you. Well, oh, thanks. You're welcome. So, Aw, thank you. So I will put this with Susie's things. Just another button cool. company and bodkin. Yeah. <laughs> Those are our letters for the day. Yes, the letter of the day is B. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you for joining us today. We also like to also remember to thank all of the designers, mm -hmm. all of the other floss tubers, everybody yes. who contributes to making this such a great um, and, craft and hobby. And just the community. Everybody is so sweet, generous, and giving, and yes. supportive, and just thank you. Yes. And remember, share, share the joy of needlework. Bye-bye.